Here in part four, we're going to learn how to do a box X stitch, which is crucial for putting webbing together. For this video, I'm still using lightweight polypropylene, but I've switched over to the black colored so that you can better see the stitches. First cut a strip of webbing to practice on. Right after you cut it, quickly run a lighter over the tips so that they melt and fuse shut. If you don't, later on the tips will fray like this. Now let's say I lay down a line of stitches across the material like this. The stitches appear to hold the webbing together, but watch this. There's virtually no strength there because the threads at each end of the stitching are free floating. So here's how we get around that. This time, center the material under the needle. Drop the presser foot, sink your needle all the way through the material, and put your machine in reverse. Now one thing to remember, when you put your machine in reverse, you still hand crank in the same direction you normally do. Now stitch backwards until you reach the edge of your material and stop at a point when the needle is sunk into your material. Then put the machine back into forward. Now stitch forward over the stitches we just made and keep stitching until you reach the other end. Stopping again with the needle sunk, we then throw the machine into reverse and back stitch for several stitches. Then remove your material. Now check this out. Now that we've doubled up the ends of the threads, we've added a lot of strength. In fact, the pros usually triple up on their stitches, but we're sticking to double here because it's good enough for making mock-ups and prototypes. In any case, this is called back tacking or locking your stitch. We don't need to double up on all of our stitching, just at the beginning and end points. Next we'll move on to turns. We'll start off doing the exact same thing we did last time, starting in reverse in the center, then proceeding to the front edge of the material in the forward direction. But this time, when you get to the front edge and sink your needle, don't put the machine in reverse. Instead, raise the presser foot. Then, using the needle as a pivot point, rotate your material 90 degrees. Then drop the presser foot and continue stitching forward about the same length as the width of your material. Now all that we're gonna do is make a square. Do two more turns, always with the needle sunk, until you get back to the beginning of the square. Then throw your machine in reverse and lay down a few stitches to lock the ends of the threads in place. Once you've got these practice techniques down, we're ready for the box X stitch. What we're going to do is use our sewing machine to draw this pattern on the webbing. As you can see, this particular pattern is like one of those drawing puzzles where I can draw the entire thing without lifting my pen from the paper. That's why the box X can be sewed continuously. Now in reality, we are going to back tack, so stitching this pattern is actually going to look like this. Let's try it. Now aesthetically, this doesn't compare to what an expensive production machine could do, but this is how you do it on the cheap using a domestic sewing machine. It's good enough for mock-ups and prototypes, and I found it strong enough for dog collars and leashes for my two 30-pound dogs. The box X stitch is incredibly strong, and once you've got this technique down, you can use it to assemble your own webbing projects and attach the hardware pieces we went over in the first video. For those of you who require a little more hand-holding, in the next and final video, I'll assemble something from start to finish and give you a couple of pointers along the way. I'm Rain No for Core 77 TV. And you're welcome.